We're going to get started here. Welcome to this educational teleconference on Essential Tremor. Uh, my name is Tony Francisco, and I'll be your host for the next half hour or so. A little background on me. I'm a product manager at Cala Health. Um, we have been studying Essential Tremor and patient treatment for it uh, for the past five years. And our North Star, or guiding principle, even as a startup on Stanford's campus five years ago, has always been to serve people with essential tremor in a meaningful way. Uh, so we aim to do just that in this gathering. Uh, we also hope to follow up uh, this with, with many more like it. As um, you hear this uh, webinar and are interested in learning more, uh, please reach out to us and, and I'll, I'll provide all the information for that later in the, in the presentation. So here's what we have for you today. Cala Health and the International Essential Tremor Foundation, or IETF, have been partnering uh, over the years to raise awareness about ET and the clinical studies that uh, Cala Health has been putting on um, for the innovative treatments for essential tremor. And that's exactly what we'll be discussing today. For this particular conversation, I'm joined by Dr. Deira Koshla. She is a neuro neurologist practicing in the San Francisco Bay Area. Dr. Koshla has been treating patients with essential tremor for over 12 years. And so she has in-depth knowledge on current treatments, including one just recently made available called Calatrio therapy. Welcome, Dr. Koshla. Thanks, Tony. It's a pleasure to be here. With all the work that's done in essential tremor, it's really important to share both the basic knowledge and the new insight that we're learning. So I'm really excited to be here and help in that way. Great. Yeah, I am too. For those on uh, the phone, know that you can, um, uh, if you are online, interact with us uh, by uh, chatting um, on the on the uh, Zoom function, and we'll see any questions you have. We'll try and get to those questions during as well as at the end of, of our presentation. So we're going to get right into it. So as you well know, Dr. Koshla, essential tremor is the most common neurological movement disorder. It affects over 7 million people uh, in the U.S., and as a point of reference, that's eight times more common than the more well-known Parkinson's disease. But it's, of course, distinctly different. Uh, essential tremor often comes about during intention tasks, so everyday activities can be extremely difficult. Uh, IETF completed a recent survey of people with essential tremor, and uh, those people noted that, mo that the most difficult tasks for them were writing, um, eating and drinking, and holding and carrying items. So Dr. Koshla, from your perspective, what are the symptoms of essential tremor that patients are learning to deal with as they are just starting to seek help, expert help or medical help? The symptoms of essential tremor that patients struggle with mostly include uncontrollable shaking that occurs with the use of their hands. But symptoms can also include shaking of the voice and nodding of the head. External factors can also impact tremor. For example, tremors can become worse with emotional stress and with intentional movement. Tremors can actually also improve sometimes with rest. Yeah, it's interesting that rest can help. I mean, you know, that seems to be uh, a cure for, for a lot of things. So uh, who's your typical patient? Of course, there's not just one, but uh, what do they all share? And then maybe help us understand what's different about them. What's their range in age, differences in what they deal with, uh, that sort of thing. So essential tremor is more common in people over the age of 40. The prevalence of essential tremor seems to be similar in males and females. Tremor usually begins in an upper extremity, but as we mentioned earlier, tremor can also affect the head, voice, and the lips. About 50% of patients can also identify a family member with a similar tremor, which is why essential tremor can also be known as familial tremor. Yeah, of course, that makes sense. I mean, family history, is, it, it's so important in um, health, uh, personal health. We all look to our parents for, you know, what things they've had to deal with and what we might need to prepare for. So let's go back to the shared experience, though. Uh, how does a patient's essential tremor change over time? So typically, essential tremor becomes more severe with time. 
The actual rate at which one's tremor occurs remains consistent over time. However, the degree of the vibration or the amplitude of tremor varies, and that may increase with hunger, emotion, fatigue, extreme temperatures even. Yeah, uh, I mean, all of this makes sense. Human emotions change with all those factors as well. So being angry can make your tremor worse. That, that mm -hmm. you know, seems obvious. Um, as tremor gets worse, how do these patients cope? Well, it can become frustrating and challenging as they start to realize that they're not able to do the simple things in their lives. Some patients tend to isolate themselves from their friends and family in order to avoid embarrassing situations. Geez, that's really tough. I mean, uh, patients and their loved ones. So when you see this person who's first starting to look at their tremor in a different way, how do you sit down with them? How, how do you understand their experience with tremor? And then um, maybe let's get into the details of how you diagnose them. So I think the most important thing to do is to conduct a thorough review of the patient's medical history and his or her symptoms. I also do a detailed physical examination. There are no medical tests right now to specifically diagnose essential tremors. So a person is diagnosed by ruling out other conditions that can cause similar symptoms. Yeah, uh, I mean, diagnosis, it always does sound difficult to do. Here, it, it sounds like a very inexact science. Uh, there's no blood test, right, that gives you the answer. It's down to their history and physical exam, right? Right. So there are a couple of types of patients that come to my office. So one is the patient who has a known family history of essential tremor, and they've started to develop symptoms. They know it's most likely essential tremor because mom, dad, or someone else in their family has it. The other type of patient is someone who doesn't have a clear family history, they come in wondering if their tremor is Parkinson's disease or some other movement disorder. And doing a thorough history and physical exam helps to rule out other causes of tremor. And once we diagnose them with essential tremor, that's when we begin to discuss whether treatment is even indicated. Oftentimes patients say to me, I just wanted to know if this was Parkinson's or not. The tremor doesn't affect me adversely in my daily life. In a situation like that, we may elect not to treat. Maybe treatment can be considered in the future when it becomes worse. If a patient says the tremor is getting in the way of my life, that's when we start to discuss potential treatment options. Yeah, that's, that's heavy, getting in the way of life. Um, so when they're ready for treatment, what are the options? I'm sure there's a range depending on the severity of tremor. How much, you know, depending on how much it's impacting their life, what are the simple ones to start or try? Right, so there are non-medical options like keyboards that are adapted to help or eating utensils that are specially weighted to counter the tremor movement. Some patients do choose to take medications to treat their tremor. The most common medications are propranolol and primidone. These medications work for many, but not for all. In fact, they're ineffective for 50% of patients. Plus some patients choose to discontinue them due to side effects. Yeah, when it comes to healthcare, I often think of drugs and procedures. Uh, you know, the non-medical or assistive devices you mentioned, they seem like an easy to try low risk approach. Um, I would guess if appropriate, they'd sound like a great alternative to consider. What treatments are available if these first ones don't help as much as needed? There are a few other options that are more invasive. The first is a surgical option called deep brain stimulation. Uh, during the surgery, electrodes are placed in the thalamus, which is the part of the brain that coordinates and controls muscle activity. The electrodes in the thalamus are connected to a device which is implanted under the skin in the chest. And that device sends electrical pulses to the thalamus, which blocks the signals that cause tremors. Focus ultrasound, which has been used more recently, destroys small regions of nerve cells in the thalamus that cause tremor. This procedure is performed while the patient is awake. Although there are no incisions in the scalp or holes through the skull for focused ultrasound, it's still considered to be invasive because it destroys cells in the brain. And as I understand it, all those treatments have been around for a bit of time, right? So you've had experience though with a new therapy called Calatrio. I'll describe a little bit about it and then maybe uh, you can share how you talk about it with patients. Sure. 
Uh, Caltrio is a, a wrist-worn personalized therapy for essential tremor. It has three parts. So the stimu stimulator looks like an Apple Watch face. Uh, it has accelerometers in it, which detect each patient's unique tremor frequency so that it can deliver personalized therapy. There's also a band, which contains three electrodes. Uh, that's how the stimulation is delivered. Uh, the band you can tighten around your wrist with a one-handed adjustable loop. And each band lasts for about 90 days and is re replaceable. There's also a base station used to charge the whole device. So, you know, it's a fair bit different than all those therapies that you touched on, Dr. Koshla. H how do you talk about Calatrio therapy to patients that you work with? How do you explain to them how the therapy works? I tell patients that the Calatrio therapy is non-invasive and it's non-pharmacological. The therapy is calibrated to their unique tremor pattern. When it's activated, the Calatrio gently stimulates the nerves in their wrists. Uh, the stimulation disrupts the tremor network in their brain and provides meaningful tremor reduction in the treated hand. A person stimulates with the Calatrio for 40 minutes, and we found in our trials that a 40-minute stimulation session provides on average 96 minutes of tremor relief. Patients reported that they experienced a 49% average reduction in tremor amplitude during activities of daily living. Some patients actually reported as much as an 80% reduction in tremor amplitude. And as you know, tremors vary from one day to the next and from one person to the next. There are also different types of tremor. So the best way to know if the Calatrio therapy will work for you is to simply try it. Yeah, and you rightly point out that CalaHealth is learning about this new class of therapy. Uh, we're also distributing it in a careful and responsible manner. Uh, so Calatrio is, of course, cleared by the FDA to treat essential tremor, but it requires a prescription. Uh, with a new class of therapy like this, trying something new like this could come about from thoughtful conversation between a patient and their physician. Uh, from a physician's perspective, Dr. Koshal, could you share with us some of the notable benefits and to keep things balanced, of course, the side effects uh, seen in these clinical trials? Sure. So during a clinical trial, 75% of patients experienced meaningful symptom improvement according to healthcare professional ratings. 70% showed improvement in activities of daily living and 78% reported improvement holding a full cup of tea. Kala is a safe non-surgical therapy option, and it provides relief without systemic side effects or drug-drug interactions, but it does have mild to moderate potential side effects. These include redness, itching, or electrical burns at the site of stimulation. Now, as with any therapy, it's important to note contraindications. The device should not be used by anyone who has an implanted electrical medical device, like a pacemaker, defibrillator, or deep brain stimulator. It should not be used by patients who have epilepsy or other seizure disorder. It shouldn't be used by patients who are pregnant. And it shouldn't be used by anyone who has swollen, infected, or inflamed areas or open wounds around the area of the wrist where the stimulation will be applied. Uh, I recommend that physicians and patients refer to the labeling, which is on calatrio.com so that they can review the complete list of warnings, precautions, and contraindications. Thanks for being really detailed in all of uh, you know, the, the uh, technical as well as clinical parts of the therapy. Um, now I'm gonna get into specific patient experiences because um, I know our audience definitely wants to hear about that. Uh, and these are specific patient exper experiences that you saw in the clinical trials. Uh, can you maybe share some of these? Sure, uh, so there was one patient who loved to crochet, but had to give it up as her tremor worsened over the years. But upon using the device, she was able to crochet again. She even gave me a beautifully crocheted gift. It was really heartwarming to see that she was able to return to doing something that she loved. Similarly, there was another patient, he had to give up playing golf because of his essential tremor. And after using the Calatrio device, he was able to swing the golf club again. Uh, another patient, a young woman who also had a full-time job, um, was able to sit through her meetings at work and take better care of her children 
after therapy sessions with the device. Uh, yeah, and you can learn more about this particular patient, uh, Joyce, on calatrio.com. Uh, she shares her experience at Tremor, learning about it from a young age, 10 or 12 years old, and then learning about Calatrio and sharing her experience with the therapy. You'll not only hear her story in her own words, but you can also see the relief that she receives in videos of Joyce picking up a cup or doing other activities of daily living before and after therapy. So on calatrio.com, uh, you can find more patients, uh, you know, including Joyce, all with essential tremor, some with familial tremor, sharing their stories as well. And then, of course, there's product information. Finally, please reach out to us by phone, email, and even social media. Uh, Cala Health is on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you want to know more about Calatrio, we would love to get to know you better as well. Caltrio.com has all of this information, so please visit. All right, uh, let's see here. With the remaining time, uh, Dr. Koshla and I will field questions from the audience. So we're going to start off with some ones that uh, were given to us beforehand. Uh, here's the first one, Dr. Koshla. What does Calatrio therapy feel like? Um, I think you mentioned that it gently stimulates nerves in the wrist. Can you maybe describe that feeling? So it feels like a tingling or pulsing sensation in your fingers. Um, Joyce, the patient we talked about earlier, calls it a unique feeling. She says it doesn't really hurt, it doesn't tickle, it just feels like a tingling, pulsing sensation. And she says that she can go about her day while doing the treatment. Yeah, and, and that's a great point. The stimulation can be adjusted on setup and readjusted as necessary, even during therapy. So our recommendation is that patients adjust the intensity of their stimulation so that it feels comfortable um, throughout that 40 minute therapy session. All right, next question here. Uh, what activities can you do while you're using Calatria therapy? So during the 40 minute therapy session, most activities are fine to continue. Correct placement of the Calatrio band electrodes is essential to therapy success. So you should refrain from any activity that could cause placement of the band and contact of the electrodes with the skin to change. So for example, flexing your wrist at extreme angles might do that. So you would want to avoid doing anything like that. Additionally, the instructions warn patients not to use Calatrio while sleeping, driving, bathing, operating machinery, or doing any other activity where involuntary muscle contraction due to therapy may cause undue risk of injury. Yeah, that all makes sense. Uh, common sense, in fact, but um, a good reminder. So uh, here's another good one. Uh, once I have a Calatrio prescribed for my one hand, can I get it for the other? Well, Calatrio therapy has a designated handedness. Uh, there is a left-handed device and a right-handed device. The device is not interchangeable from one side to the other. And more importantly, the clinical trials evaluated Calatrio therapy in one hand only. It's unknown if use on both hands will provide better, worse, or similar benefit. Yeah, and that highlights a great point, uh, Dr. Koshla. With a novel technology first-in-class therapy, Cala Health uh, knows that we have a lot to learn about the therapy. And so as we better understand its use and efficacy, we'll certainly share that insight. Like all therapies, individual results are important. Uh, they're individual, meaning it's personal to you. There are two things to highlight here. First, as you use Calatrio therapy, it helps you pay attention to your tremor. The watch asks you if therapy is helping your tremor, and it records your rating, how you think it's working for you. Mm -hmm. You can try it for 60 days, see if the benefit that it's providing you today is, is something valuable for you. Second, our customer success team works with you to not only get Calatrio therapy set up for you, but more importantly, it helps you fine tune your use of it. Basically how you can make it fit into your life. If you're wondering when to use it so that you can meet family and friends out, or if you're wondering if you can use it more than you currently are, whatever the concern, our customer success team is, it's, they're just an email or phone call away. After working with our team to try it, if you decide not to continue with therapy, we will 
refund 100% of your money minus a $99 return fee. So as, as you mentioned, we want people trying Calatrio and the people try, using it, um, we want them to be completely satisfied. So that brings up another good point. Uh, Dr. Koshal, can you share with people how they might consider Calatrio therapy with their physician? The best way is to just talk to your physician about how Calatrio therapy might fit into your treatment plan. There is a doctor discussion guide that you can download from the website, calatrio.com. You can bring that discussion guide with you to your next doctor's appointment, and that guide will help raise important things to consider in identifying appropriate treatments. If your physician has any questions, they can refer to calatrio.com or they can reach out to the company by phone or email. Great, yeah, thanks for detailing all of that. Looks like we've gotten to all the questions. Um, that said, I think uh, we'll, we'll close today's uh, um, teleconference. And, and so if you have questions though that you weren't able to give us, or um, if you think of other questions afterward, please visit calatrio.com, get in touch with us by phone, email, you name it. Uh, we're here for you. Uh, we're excited to talk with you and, and, of course, delighted to help you in your journey and learning about and managing your tremor. Um, Dr. Koshla, thanks for your time. Um, and everyone else on the phone, um, thanks for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Tony.